a new series of great escapes and a whole new collection of the world's most amazing escapes from death and disaster. Everything you're about to see was filmed as it happened. No reconstructions here, this is for real. So let's get into gear straight away with a sensational race which takes an unexpected and terrifying turn. It's the Australian Championships and it's every man for himself. Lap two and disaster strikes. For Graham O'Brien in car number nine, the race is over. The replay shows how he's forced off the track and into a terrifying series of somersaults, bouncing up to 20 feet into the air. Once he comes to rest, rescuers race to the scene and, miraculously, they find Graham's completely unheard. When the car started to spin, I thought, well, this is something else which is not familiar with this feeling. As it started to spin and spin and spin, I thought, well, goodness, I hope to stop soon. And it kept spinning for a while longer. I thought, hmm, this is going to be interesting to see what happens. And it was. It's his first major crash, though he insists he was never in any real danger. I was confident that the safety equipment and the precautions that are taken when the car is constructed would be sufficient to prevent any serious injury occurring to me. To race these cars is a thrill which is very difficult to describe to somebody unless they've been out and actually done it themselves. The adrenaline rush, uh, the excitement of the whole race, it's the most fun you can have with your clothes on. They don't come any faster than these monsters. Nought to 280 in seconds, the power's explosive. Driver Keith Aegeus is really in the hot seat now, and with nitro fuel burning all around him, he's desperate to get out. Keith gets a face full of foam, but both he and the other driver walk away unharmed. As he guns it, he doesn't realise oil's pouring from a broken cylinder, creating an instant fireball. I shut the fuel down, shut the uh, motor down and uh, was holding onto the brake and while it was on fire the back left hand tyre exploded through the heat and flames and it uh, jolted the car. Because I couldn't see, I thought I'd straighten the steering wheel properly to be in a straight direction but I was on a slight angle and ran into Darren Carter in the back of his car and consequently my car exploded and his exploded on impact because the nitromethane tank was ruptured. He admits he thought he was going to die. And I was on fire and I couldn't see in front of me. It was like throwing a blanket over me. And my major concern was to stop the car uh, and uh, survive through it. You can't give up. If you give up, you will die. But why take the risk? To control something that's got so much power and such a lethal monster, and I have control of it. I think I'm a control freak. The car didn't beat me. I beat it, so it's over. From horsepower on wheels to the real thing now, and a freak riding accident which turns a canter through the countryside into a desperate life and death struggle. A horse has fallen and landed upside down in a ditch. This is a new one on the rescue team and they're not sure where to begin. Well, what we're thinking of doing here is to secure the feet, so it doesn't try to climb out of here again. Then, a frightening discovery. Pinned underneath the horse is the rider. One wrong move and she could be crushed to death. Ma'am, did you hear what's going on? Okay. Under the weight of her Arab mare, Twister, Sharon Vance can hardly breathe. Rescuers know they have to get her out quickly. Any violent movement could kill her. Karen, you okay? Get it up 
guys back there to get the weight up. They are forced to roll up like this and just we can fly her out. Lifting Twister's head gives Sharon some relief. Take a big breath now. Both horse and rider are exhausted and scared now. At last, a vet arrives, but he's more used to dogs and cats than horses. He's not sure what to do. Does you feel like you can sedate him enough? Just be, I can try. I know where, you know, where the juggler group is. The 20 year old Mira is sedated. It's time to try and move her. Get her out of there, quick. Get her out of there. Let go of the rope. Keep her over. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go over. Let her wipe down. Hey, somebody grab that back one. Shocked and caked in mud, Sharon is finally free. Her rescue is Pat Twister trying to keep her quiet while paramedics assess Sharon's injuries. She's cut and bruised, but there's no major damage. She's more concerned about Twister. Remarkably, she's quite relaxed. I don't think anything's broken because I was really... Yes, I do. Which one? The pinky? Okay. How about the big one? A chopper takes Sharon to hospital, but the horse is still struggling. Okay, okay, okay. Just hold on. Don't let it go over back. Come on, buddy. She's too heavy for the rescue team to pull out. So the only answer is another helicopter. They have to move quickly. It's getting dark and she needs to get to a vet as soon as possible. It's a bizarre and spectacular sight as the horse is flown to safety. Within minutes she's on the ground and the vet gives her the all clear. It's the end of 90 minutes of sheer terror, but thanks to some tremendous teamwork the pair survived to ride another day. I'm sure you've all seen those warnings on motorways about the dangers of nodding off while driving. Well, this great escape shows what can happen when the warning is ignored. Because this next driver fell asleep at the wheel and woke up to find her life hanging in the balance. <coughs> Terrified teenager Kathy Chung screams for help. Her car is hanging by just one wheel over the edge of a bridge with a 50-foot drop beneath. She's wedged under the dashboard and can't get out. With the car in such a precarious position, every second is vital. A sling is hooked around the front of the car and they start to winch it up, but are dramatically stopped. They fear it could break in two. Kathy is offered a comforting hand. She's still conscious, but she's tiring fast. Firemen look for other ways of getting the 19-year-old to safety. They cut through the mangled wreckage. At last, Kathy's upper body is free, but her legs are still firmly trapped. There's nothing else for it. A rescuer puts his life on the line and climbs in to help. After an agonizing two and a half hours, Kathy is finally out, vowing this nightmare will keep her wide awake at the wheel from now on. It's an American air show and the pilots thrilling the crowd with a spectacular display of death-defying stunts. But the pilot's only half of an amazing double act. Look closely and you'll see his partner, wing walker Lee Oman. He's an expert and he needs to be. One wrong move and it could be his last. All that's between him and the ground is a thin safety cable. For today's final stunt, Lee has to position himself under the plane to hang from the axle. It's extremely dangerous, the climax of the whole show. It's all going well, then suddenly he slips. 
and is left dangling hundreds of feet in the air. Pilot Jim Franklin is forced to circle the airfield till a rescue plan can be worked out and he's almost on empty. Lee can't hold on much longer. Rescue has come up with an idea that's going to need perfect timing and pinpoint accuracy. They're going to try and drop him in a moving truck. The pilot keeps his eyes on the second truck running parallel to guide him into position. Once in the pickup, the plane must be kept steady while the cable's cut. I grabbed him and jerked him in. These guys pulled him down and you're hanging on to him trying to cut the cord. The guy hit the cable with the knife first. He had to get down onto the nylon to cut it. It took about three or four whacks to do it. In the meantime, we were all going right over to cab with the truck. Jim's leaning out the cockpit and saying, uh, truck, oh, I got it now. He's going to try to stick me in the truck. Don't drag me on the ground. I don't have roller skates. For a high flyer like this, it's all in a day's work. Still to come on Great Escapes, an explosive encounter for firefighters. The battle to save a baby bear caught in a trap. And the alligator wrestler who meets his match. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Miccosukee Indian Village in Florida's Everglades Swamplands, home to some of the world's biggest and fiercest alligators. Basking in the sun, they appear lazy and lethargic, but in this case, appearances are definitely deceptive. Kenny Cypress, and while he no longer risks losing his head, he's still wrestling the gators. I just love entertaining people and I like to, you know, do something risky and um, I have fun. Kenny tells us the worst part of the ordeal was when the alligator belched in his face. He says the aroma was indescribable. Now, when it comes to fighting fires, the latest high-tech equipment helps to save lives. But there are times when even the lowest tech approach can work wonders. Jumping out of a blazing bedroom window into a blanket might sound crazy. But in this next horrifying incident, it's the last resort. Do or die. Trapped on the second floor, a grandfather makes a split-second decision to try and save his granddaughter. Despite clipping the ledge, six-year-old Justine Ancrum lands safely in the blanket. She only has minor injuries and is rushed off for a reassuring cuddle. You're going to be okay, baby, okay? All right? Her granddad is still trapped inside, surrounded by deadly, choking smoke. He's saved just in time. But suddenly, there's a fresh alarm. Justine's nine-year-old brother is still missing. Firefighters in breathing apparatus search the building and one of them appears, cradling Christopher's limp body. He's unconscious and desperately needs oxygen. There was a nine-year-old kid that we didn't find until we did an internal search of the building, and uh, as of right now, he's, he's uh, kicking and breathing uh, and has been transported to the hospital. The whole family say, Justine and Christopher living proof that there really is no one quite like Grandad. Plastics factory goes up in flames in Lima, Peru. As thick smoke billows in the air, locals move their belongings away from the danger. Water's having little impact on the blaze, but firemen struggle on. Two men on an aerial platform tackle the worst of it. Suddenly, swirling clouds of smoke swallow them up. They can't breathe. Desperate for air, they crouch down. 
it's getting too dangerous, so the basket is lowered. The firemen turn the hose off for just a second. The force of the fireball knocks out the camera. When the picture comes back, there's total panic. Colleagues rush to help the injured men and drag them away. One of them shows no signs of life. They tear off his breathing apparatus and he's carried away for urgent treatment. The ferocity of the fireball is terrifying. It's hard to imagine anyone surviving, but survive they did. The priority now is the ten other firemen caught in the blast. Reinforcements return to beat the flames, this time from behind a barricade. They're taking no more chances. The power and unpredictability of the blaze has taught them a lesson no one here will ever forget. Our next great escapes show the lengths some people are prepared to go to to rescue animals in distress. In this first bizarre incident, they're trying to save a dog with a nose for trouble. Trapped somewhere in this maze of drainage pipes is Grio, an Australian shepherd dog. They can hear him, but finding him is another matter. Grio wandered into one of the pipes, then fell six feet down into another. Now his legs are caught on an impeller blade used to pump water. Workers try dismantling the pipe, but Grio is getting increasingly impatient. He's been down there for five hours now. He needs to be rescued fast. The impeller blade where he's stuck starts automatically in the rain. If the storm breaks, he'll be killed instantly. What are you planning on? Three angles. I gotta be able to get it down there. The fireman comes close to reaching him, but not close enough. He actually bit onto the rope. He's got a strong jaw. He bit onto the rope and I pulled him. I was actually getting him up. I thought he was going to hang on. They take a photo of the dog's position to get a better idea of what to do next. Is this just after you move his head? Yeah. Okay. There's the impeller, and eventually draws water up the pipe and out. And he's right here. Next, they try using a dog catcher's noose. It doesn't work, so they call in the heavy mob. And a crane is used to pull up the whole drainage system. It's a huge task. No expense is spared. Finally, the pipe is laid on the ground, and at long last, a sorry-looking Grio is lifted out. He's taken to the animal hospital, suffering from dehydration. Apart from that, he's no worse for his ordeal, and is soon on his way home. Leaving the water company to count the cost of a major rebuilding program. It's one of the most desolate places on earth, the Arctic Circle. And it's here that polar bear mothers are leaving their dens with their young cubs in search of food. It's a time when volunteers begin an annual mercy mission. These men are from RASPA, the Russian-American Society for the Protection of Animals. A haunting cry draws them over the ice cap. A tiny cub has got its paw caught in a fox trap, left by irresponsible hunters. It's a heart-rending scene. Armed rescuers want to help but the aggressive and worried mother stands guard. She could attack them at any moment. They're risking their lives being this close. It's a highly dangerous move, but the rescuers try scaring off the mother with their tracking vehicle. It works. They rush to release the cub. They've got to be quick. Mum could be back at any time. A few more agonizing seconds as they strain to open the jaws of the trap. Then the baby set free. 
Instinctively, he runs off towards his mother, happily on all fours. It's a good sign. Many polar bear cubs lose a paw in the frantic struggle to escape the deadly fox traps and perish in the ice and snow. This little chap was one of the lucky ones. Well done, that rescue team. And that brings us to a happy ending for this week. See you for more Great Escapes next week. Be safe. Bye-bye.